Welcome, I'm Matt at U.S. Frontier Miniatures. With this video, I'd like to show you how to create a log cabin like this one. I call it a settler's log cabin. You know, after young America purchased the Louisiana Territory from France in 1805, European settlers flocked to the new frontier. And why not? Trees were readily available, as were the stones for the foundation and for the chimney. This is a miniature representation of what many of these now historic log cabins look like. And I would like to show you how to make one for yourself. <music> Frontier Miniatures. Welcome to my workshop and studio. My purpose with these videos is to help you create quality, historically accurate miniatures. So whether you're a beginner, a miniature hobbyist, a model railroader, a mini war gamer, or just someone who wants to create a unique item that they can display on their mantle or bookcase, you've definitely come to the right place. I craft my miniatures in the O, a quarter inch scale. However, the methods and techniques that are presented here can easily be adapted to other scales. No fancy power tools are needed. In fact, if you can handle common hand tools, you won't have any problems. Plus, with the techniques that I've learned over the years, plus some unique and simple methods that I have developed myself. Making a quality, historically accurate miniature is within everyone's reach. Let's get started. In planning this historically accurate miniature of a settler's log cabin, I relied on two books for most of my research. The first book that I consider my Bible here at U.S. Frontier Miniatures is American Homes by Lester Walker. You can see in his section on log cabins that he not only illustrates the outside of the cabins, but also details the interior floor plans. He also ends with the approximate year in which they started to be used in Frontier America. The second book is American Houses by Gerald Forster. He also has a section on log cabins and even details the various corner notches that were used in various parts of colonial America. The uh, dovetail notch here is said to have made the firmest joints and it's the one we're going to use incidentally in this build. You will be able to download information on both these books as they will be included in my complete list of materials, supplies and tools down below. And you can also download these plan drawings free at another link below. So uh, I've designed a one room log cabin, which was most common in those days. And in true size, it would be uh, 18 feet wide by 14 feet deep by about 24 feet high. It has three windows and one door. It will sit on a stone foundation and we'll have a stone fireplace on one side. Here are the plans drawn in one quarter inch scale with the actual size of our miniature being four and a half inches wide by three and a half inches deep by five and seven sixteenths inches high to the top of the roof. To complete the planning process, I decided that we will use dovetail corner notches that I had previously mentioned. There are about seven or eight different types of notches, incidentally. Also, we will replicate in miniature square hewn logs. Some people used round logs, but the more skillful settlers who could handle an axe well squared the logs because they fit together better and they made for a more sturdier log cabin. 
be as accurate as possible, we'll even add the ax marks to the logs from the ewing process, as you can see in this picture. So, the logical place to start building our log cabin is to measure and cut out the basic parts of the structure. For this, I prefer a product called Gator Board that has a foam core but a 132nd inch wood veneer surface on both sides. It is solid but lightweight, and best of all, it can be easily cut with an X Acto knife or with what I prefer, a utility knife. I'll start the process by cutting out the first piece, but then I'll finish cutting the rest of the pieces off camera. That way, you will see the tools and the techniques that I use, but you will not have to watch me measuring and cutting each subsequent piece. What I'm using here is a solid aluminum ruler and a white chalk pencil on this black colored gator board. The ruler has a 3 16th inch lip, which gives you an extra safety barrier when using your knife. The trick in cutting the gator board is to score the board lightly first, and then apply increasing pressure with each subsequent pass. Here are the cutout pieces for the log cabin structure. We also need to cut out some support braces to help in gluing the cabin together and to give it overall strength. For this, I use a 3 8 inch square wood dowels. You can use any size wood you want, of course, since these are our interior braces. At the same time, we may as well cut out the wood pieces for our underlying chimney structure. Here, I do recommend a 5 8 inch square piece of wood. Converting from our quarter inch scale, this would give a frontier settler a walk-in hoth area of two and a half feet, which was very typical of log cabin fireplaces in those days. For cutting this size wood, I use a small Zona thin slot miter box. It's made out of aluminum and a small uh, Zona razor saw. Again, I'll have a link below for you to get a copy of my complete list of materials, supplies, and tools. After this first piece, uh, I'll cut the rest of the support braces and chimney substructure off camera. And then next, uh, we will glue the basic log cabin together. Okay, uh, we have all the parts now, so it's time to glue everything together. Like a number of other miniaturists, I use a combination of a super glue and a plain old Elmer's glue oil, alternating the drops on each wood uh, brace. You'll notice that I'm uh, using a bookend also. It's perfectly square and it's to help me align the braces correctly. I'll go ahead and speed the video up now as I glue everything together. With the chimney, I recommend uh, putting these uh, plastic clamps or a similar type clamp onto the pieces and letting them set overnight. Well, okay, the uh, glue on the chimney is dry now. So I'll go ahead and take off the clamps and I'll speed up the rest of the video as I glue the rest of the basic structure house plots together.
there you have it. It's all square and glued together. I'll just keep these bookends pressed against it overnight. Okay, uh, all the logs are cut out now, and on the side where the chimney is, I've cut the logs in half. We will fit them more exactly after the stones are embossed on the chimney itself. As you can see, looking at these logs from one side of the cabin, they are varied slightly in length, as I had previously uh, mentioned. In making dovetails in the past, I've used either an X-Acto chisel blade with a small hammer or a uh, razor blade scraper. My preference for this project is the uh, small razor blade, uh, razor blade scraper. The dovetail should always start at the outside corner of the log cabin structure. So the inside dimension on each side will always be the same, but to be historically accurate, the overall length will vary slightly in length as the pioneers were not so much interested in, in, in aesthetics as they were in having a snug fit. If you visit a historic log cabin or look up some on the internet, you'll notice that the overall logs varied in length. In starting the process, I take a strip of wood and hold it to the cabin structure with both ends being approximately equal distance from each corner. I just eyeball it uh, because remember, the pioneers uh, building these did not measure each end exactly the same. Next, after drawing the two lines, I use a small scrap piece of styrene to connect these lines to each two corners at the end of the wood. I leave about a 2 16th inch width of wood at what will be the base of the dovetail. I then start cutting the dovetail with the razor blade scraper along the lines that I had drawn. It is not a uh, quick and easy process to master, but it is certainly doable. I would uh, also advise you to practice first on some scrap wood. In addition, if your hands are not that strong, I would certainly recommend using the X-Acto chisel tool along with a small hammer to tap it through the wood. The next step is to distress the wood to make them look similar to squared off round logs. I use my utility knife for this. Again, you might want to practice this first as the trick is to take off long, thin slivers along the edges of the two corners that will remain exposed. You may have noticed that our cabin is eight logs high Seven or eight logs was very typical of a one-room log cabin in the wilderness of the Louisiana Territory. That is because any additional height exceeded an average man's height and physical limitations in managing to hoist logs any higher. In pioneer towns, two or more men could build higher log structures. Some even uh, made makeshift pulley systems. Here's how one of our logs will look against the cabin structure prior to staining and aging it. Included in the plan drawings are the length and number of pieces that we will need. You'll note that I have varied the minimum and maximum lengths by about two eighths of an inch so that our logs will look realistic for the period in which they were used. One last thing on cutting out the logs. You need to make two that look like this, one for the front and one for the back. 
They are called half dovetails and are used to form the two base logs for stacking the rest of the logs on. Well, the logs all have dovetails now, and I've carved the two outside corners along each log to remove that rectangular look. Next, I have an enlarged photograph here of an old log cabin that shows a few of the logs and the broad axe marks from the ewing process. You'll notice that there is no distinctive pattern. There's rather just random marks on the logs. Plus, you should be aware that everyone had their own techniques using the broad axe. So what we'll do is using a utility knife, we'll place our simulated axe marks in a random fashion. There you go. This is certainly going to look good when we use the stain and complete the weathering process on each log. To weather the logs, we are going to combine 91% rubbing alcohol with India ink. It's an old model railroaders technique that they use to weather their wooden railroad ties and old wooden buildings. What we're looking for is a grayish black or grayish brown weathered look. To achieve that look, we need to mix one part India ink with 20 parts alcohol. Okay, uh, 20 parts alcohol to one part India ink solution is mixed now. And we could go ahead and apply it just using a regular paintbrush. Uh, if you feel that it's going on too dark, you, you can also rub it with a cotton cloth. Jumping ahead, I finished applying the solution to all the logs. You'll notice that they uh, have various shades of gray, brown, and black, but this is fine and very authentic, in fact, as logs weather naturally based on both the type of tree it is and the age at which it was cut down. Well, that's it for part one. If you found this uh, part of the build useful, please give it a thumbs up below and also subscribe. That way you will be informed of my new projects. This is a complete craft project from the chimney top right down to the display stand that it sits on. And by necessity, I've divided it into a few parts according to the sequence that I actually built it in. So if you're going to build one of these for yourself, I certainly recommend that you view the other videos. Don't forget to get a free copy of the house plan drawings below plus the supplies list and the tools that I use. In case you can't get some of these locally, I've furnished links for you to obtain them on this list. Lastly, I invite you to visit my SD shop where you can see examples of my other models. See the link below. Good luck with your own build, and if you have any questions that I can help with, please ask them in the comments section below.